with me, I'm joined by Mr. Rowland Motawong, a book reviewer. Mr. Rowland, when you're reading the book, what uh, what is your expectations from the writers, like different writers? So I review uh, fiction and non-fiction. Uh, I mostly look at African literature, uh, so African stories, uh, local stories. So the expectation is definitely that. Is the author touching on themes that are about what's happening in our society, uh, in our townships, suburban uh, cities, and so forth, and uh, also around like now there's issues around mental health um, uh, issues, um, abuse, depression, suicide, crime, things like that. So, is the book talking to the status quo? Is the book challenging us to think in a different way? Is the book able to? Um, um, elevate us so so that we learn, we are entertained. Uh, you come out a different person after reading that book. So the expectation is definitely that, and also the writing quality, because uh, there are great books and there are not so great books. So the writing of quality must be there, or the quality of writing must be there, in a sense of are you able to package let's say a chapter like does the chapter make sense like what you're telling me if let's say you want to convey a message around uh, let's say depression is it really doing the job mm. or you just uh, you know you know some some writers you, you almost like it's a rumor like you heard about depression but oh, you didn't yes. do full research yes. on it so now it becomes a bit shallow in terms of what you're telling me so we look at that to say it must be re well researched, well written, the themes must be relevant to society. Talking about the themes and the relevance of the book and the writing style, which book have you, you can say, you can give 10 out of 10 from the <laughs> books you've reviewed so oh, far? Oh, 10 out of 10. Well, first of all, there's no perfect book. Okay. Like, like books. Maybe I, maybe I took it too extreme. Like yeah, well, 10, okay, there's a book I read, I think, few years, if not two years, um, Children of the Sugar Cane. It's by a journalist called um, Joe and Joseph. Um, so it's, it's based on, it's an Indian uh, culture-based type of book which links old, and old India in the 1800s uh, with South Africa uh, in the 1800s, 19, 1900s. And it's, the main character is, is a woman. Uh, she, she leaves uh, India uh, because uh, running away from marriage, there was a, a clause or expectation for young women to get married. So she, she, she's more of a rebel and she wants uh, freedom and independence. So yeah, so she arrives in South Africa uh, the, back then uh, when under British uh, colony. And yeah, and a bunch of stuff happened. A very sad uh, story, but the quality of writing is great. The historical effect around it, the, um, um, uh, what it brings to society. If you read it, whether you're a man or a woman, there's something that it hits you. Do you prefer the, the books that you can relate to or the books that are just more creative mm. and just uh, imaginative? Either way, as long as, because uh, fiction is mostly, it's, it's imagination, um, you know, uh, poetic license, but it, it is based on reality, it's based on the real things that do happen. It's just that with fiction, you can run with, with your imagination and you can create whatever you want to yeah. create. Uh, but still sticking to the themes. Non-fiction, like the one I'm talking about, uh, Betting on the Ducky, it's mostly about business leadership and, and so forth. Okay. But if you read it, you can hear that, you know, this person is from a rural area, then the township, then they worked, they got a scholarship. So you can relate you with, with what's happening there. Uh, so either way, as long as it's, 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 it speaks to what's happening, it's not something far-fetched. It's not something that it's, it's like American or European and so forth uh, that you can't really see yourself and relate with. So for me, I, I want to see myself, but in a different light, you know, certain blind spots that we might not see on an everyday basis. So the author must bring out those things and teach and entertain also at the same time.
maybe a quick message that you can give to the 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 book writers or yeah. the authors to say if you are writing this is what we expect as a readers so sure. what can what will be that quick message for me as a as a book reviewer um like like how we mentioned we look for themes look for great writing so for aspiring writers you know do your research okay. like research. do your research and and read and write like your life depends on it oh. like breakfast lunch snack smoke break Yo. whatever like inwati must be in culture mind. like it must be something that you you wake up in the morning it's like the first thing i want to do is to read a book mm -hmm. uh, um, whether you you work or you're schooling have a book in your in your backpack you know or on your phone because now there's audio books there's um, um, e-books so you, there's different ways of reading. It's easier now. Yeah, it's easier. So it's not necessarily that you must have a hard copy all the time. Uh, read anything, newspapers, magazines, articles, blogs. As long as there's a relationship with words, okay. then you're on the right track. And then write something, even if it's a paragraph, even if it's just one sentence. But if you say you want to be a, a writer, it must be culture. The same way if someone wants to, wants to play sports, mm. you must do it every day. There must be that training of the mind to think creatively. Yep. What does, how do reading change you as a person? Does it grow you mm. or does it limit you in some things? Um, so when it's my mother who introduced me to, like, um, to, reading. to reading, you know, I think one of the first books I read was um, uh, nervous conditions. Uh, this author from Zimbabwe, uh, Titi. Uh, there was B Bessie Head. You know your your Ngukis. So, so with that, it gives you a different perspective. I grew up in a rural area, uh, just an hour away from Wombats, and in rural area you are isolated. Like you just see trees and bears and all of that. But now when my mother gave me this book and like, oh, okay, now you start seeing different things and like, oh, so these things exist out there and so forth. Then I moved into uh, the township in Mawapan in Pretoria. Then you read more and like, oh, then there's other things that exist. So, so it opens your mind. It opens your mind. It, uh, it makes you think differently. It, 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 it puts you in a creative, creative way also because Eventually, I ventured into like poetry and hip hop and so forth, mm -hmm. and and the base of write of, of, of reading helps with with that, okay. and then now also as a book reviewer, and I also teach. So so reading is, is part of is part of it. Right. You know, you learn a lot, and and you think differently, and you are able to convey a message in a different way. You are not you know, uh, ignorant on certain issues, you're curious, uh, you are become a critical thinker. So yeah, lots of, lots of benefits. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for honoring our invitation. It's just great having you in the studio. Thank you very much.